What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Kachi, where we highlight individuals that are taking their industry by storm. And today, 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 we have the first ever international guest coming straight to us live from Paris, France. Thank you, Game Boy Sammy, for coming in and kicking with me today. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. So, if you guys did not know, Game Boy Sammy is a music artist based in Paris, France, right? So, when did you start getting into music? What sort of um, influenced you to, or what pushed you to start a, a journey making music, creating music, producing music? Yeah, so I started back in 2015. Um, my big brother brought me into it. He made me listen to Chief Keef back then, like, I don't like oh, wow. and, uh, Love Sosa. So when I yeah. heard it, I was like, hmm. I got I gotta do like him. You know what I'm saying? So right. I started making music like that. Um started started beat making first because I wanted to hop on my own beats. And then with time um I started right, to right. rap and shit like that. So yeah. Um nice. And then you spoke oh I didn't want to let you finish. Yeah. What what did you say? Oh no, I didn't want to cut. I, I said I didn't want to cut you off. I was going to let you finish. Oh, yeah. So um, I really started rapping in 2020. No, 20, 2019. Sorry. We really started okay. rapping in 2019. And, and yeah, that's how I really started my journey, like rapping and all, all that stuff. And I started dropping 20, in 2020. And yeah, around my. And you spoke a little bit to, to the next question, but other than Chief Keef as an international artist, do you have any other American influences, any other American artists that you really draw inspiration from? Yeah, of course. Um, I took inspiration um, in Juice World. I like him a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Lucy Vert, Cardi. Chief Keef and Young Thug, like Young Thug a lot. So yeah, I'm listening to all those OGs and take inspiration and put them in my music. And what was the last one? Oh, Young Thug. Um, yeah, Young Thug, yeah. So, and that kind of gives us the idea that you're really into like the, you know, I see rock star rapper lifestyle things like that yeah. so what do you want fans right as coming to us live from paris to the to america what do you want new fans to know about you and know about your music um i'm talking about love passion and that's really it like i want them to I want them to to feel what I feel when I'm singing and shit like that about girls and fashion swag and that actually that's not nothing new new you know what I'm saying but I do it in the in a way I, I think they can like they can see them through my music. Right, right. And does your music, do you feel like is um, a good example of music that's coming out of Paris? Or do you think that you are a little bit different from the trend or how the curve is going? Actually, here in Paris, we are like the underground scene, take inspiration on the US. Yeah underground scene so i'm kind of like them but i still got my own my own sauce so i'm kind of different to the other right. paris artists but but yeah i'm kind of like the other rappers here in the u.s so you mm. dropped midnight in 2020 right what was yeah. the experience in now uh, like you said, making music, learning how to make uh, make beats and then rapping over those beats. What was the experience in dropping your first song, getting it on multiple 
platforms trying to push that song when you were so new? Yeah, so that song was my first um, studio studio song, I would say, uh, with right. a friend of mine, friend of mine, uh, Elvin Axie. Um, we made that song together. And actually, I didn't have a team with me at that time. So I made everything by myself. Like, oh, wow. Um, yeah, marketing wise, I had to make everything by myself. But that was kind of kind of hard because I live in Paris and I rap in English. So I had to market right, my yeah. music in the US and in France. And that was super hard, but um, people kind of liked it in France. So I made a little, little, little bit of numbers with that song. But what I, what I learned from that song is that I, I had to push my music more in the US and that would be super right. difficult to me, you know what I'm saying? So so yeah, after that song I started um um right, right. I started I say, sorry. linking with people to have a to have a team with me after that song and then right. we were really working on marketing that song in the US. Like the next right. song in the US. So I would say as an artist that's not from the U.S., is the goal to reach a certain audience or a certain level on the U.S. market as opposed to your local home industry? Um, yeah, I really want to blow up in the U.S., not in France. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. if I could be in New York right now, I, I, I would. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but that's really difficult to be in France. and market your know, music in the u.s because there's nobody you know in the u.s you right know yeah so right that's kind of tricky but that's really my goal right now and then now going to midnight in 2022 right you just dropped mm -hmm. love you too plus the music video so yeah. how do you speak to your growth your evolution as an artist going from you know, having to make everything on your own, learning how to market by yourself to now, you know, you developed your team of people and now you have a new song and a music video that just came out. Yeah, the lesson, the, the, the lesson behind that is really working with a team, working with a team, guys. Right. right. I, I made that song with, a, with my team and everyone was 100% uh, into it. So we really worked it out and yeah, I think that's my best song right now, actually. Like my best music video and my best song. And that song got me mm. signed with Dominic. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it speaks <laughs> by itself. You know what I'm saying? So right, I'm right. really proud of that song. And I think there's a real um real growth between my first song, Midnight, and that one. So I'm really proud of it. And what was the inspiration behind making the song and then the inspiration behind the music video? Are you involved also in the creative direction of the music video or was did you kind of had, had that responsibility off to somebody else? Um, totally, totally. Actually, uh, I'm learning audiovisuals mm -hmm. so, and, and cinema. So every time I make, I'm doing a song, like I got some ideas in my head for the music video. And then I'm still working with my team. So every ideas I got, I'm talking to it with my director and shit. And then we start right, to, right. to write things, storyboarding things and shit like that. And and I take a lot of inspiration um, from called Bennett. I really like his music videos and uh, oh, like, um, as a Proki's um label, I believe. So yeah. I take inspiration yeah, yeah. from them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I really like them um those um music videos and all that. And why do you feel because you said like when you first came in, you had to do everything by yourself and it was difficult, obviously, because one yeah. person could only wear so many hats, right? So yeah, exactly. why is it so important to work with other people, collaborate with other people, whether it be associates, close friends, or just acquaintances you made 
yeah. through making your music and trying to get projects done. That's super important to me because you can focus on your music. Like, right. Right now, I got I got just like one app, and I can totally focus on making music. And then all my team is working with me, and they are all working on one thing. So everybody is like focused on their thing, and I think that works better like that. Because when you got all the ads, um, you're taking much time to drop and all that. Um, sometimes I was getting bored of my song because I was doing the, the, the beat and then I was recording right. on it. Then I was mixing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then I was doing the music video and uh, right. at one time you, you, you can't listen to that song anymore. You know what I'm saying? So right. yeah, I think that's super important to, to work with a team. Like, this is the best thing. And how do you develop a team? Is it like you just went out and do like, I need a videographer, I need a beat master, or are these people that you already knew a little bit beforehand? Um, most of them are like, not colleagues, but they are in my school, audiovisual school. Yeah. And yeah. because like there are a lot of different people in my school, like there are people doing music, there are directors, there are actors, shit like that. So I just made my team off of the university, actually. And we yeah, all are friends yeah. at the same time. So that, that's better because we are friends and we're working on real things at the same time. So, yeah, I made my team of, yeah, that's dope. of my school, actually. Yeah. And I would say it's great that you're in a school where you have a lot of these things at, in close hand, exactly. right? Like they're all in in this incubator but in this incubate incubative bubble yeah where you exactly. can just create 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 so you have an ep that by the time this interview comes out it would already yeah. hopefully have already came out because exactly. you didn't have a date in june set yet mm -hmm. but hopefully by the time this interview comes out the ep will be out so what's so special about this ep i think it's your first one uh you had a bunch of, you have been going on a run of singles um, yeah. So I think this is your first EP. So what is so special about this one? And why do you feel like now is the time for you to drop an EP? Um, yeah, it will be my first EP. And what is special about it? I really put like all my person, all my character in it, into it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think people will understand me because with singles, you can't really, like, you can't really tell a story. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. EP, you can, people can, I think people will understand me better, understand my music better too, like, understand my topics and shit like that better. And, yeah, I got a bunch of songs, like, in the vault. So... I was like, let's drop something. You know what I'm let's just drop and something, right. Exactly. And every song has a little connection with the other. So I think that's perfect. Yeah. There's seven songs. Um, I think we'll, we'll have like one feature on it. And, and yeah, there's Love You Too on it, on these two. And yeah. So do you have, uh, I have think you a like date it. for, is there a date mm -hmm. for, for when you're, well, obviously, like I said, this video, this interview may be coming out, well, probably most likely will come out after that date, but when we're here sitting, there isn't a date. So is that also a decision, like not having that date set in stone, but still being flexible but when about when you're going to drop, or is that? add some anticipation does that build a fan base when people are just like okay i gotta wait all june for to see when he's gonna drop exactly like uh we're playing on that anticipation and all that um yeah so i won't tell you right now an exact date but just wait for it like it's coming it's okay coming. okay okay and then what do you want people to take away from the ep what do you want them to take ideas and emotions what do you want them to take from it mm, i want them to really 
know me better. Like they will know me better with with those songs, and right, that they, they'll get into my world. I hope so. I hope so. And everyone that's watching, you guys can make sure you can check out Midnight and Love You Too and this EP that was dropping on also on all streaming platforms, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, and YouTube. You can check it out yeah. at Game Boy Sammy. So you talked about fashion, right? And if you guys didn't know, Sammy is a big stepper when he steps outside. So is fashion uh, another lane that you want to lean into, start your own brand, or be a little bit more um, out there with your with your fashion choices, get really into clothes and wearing clothes? Yeah. Um, actually, I got that friend from my school, original school. He got he started to have um, a brand here mm-hmm. in France, and. Like he want me to be his model, so like we're talking about like pieces and all that. I'm like, okay, I like this like that. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna do it like that for you and all that. Right, so right, I'm right. starting to have my own swag with his brand. And the the thing that's cool is that it will go up with his brand, and I will go up too. You know what I'm saying? And we're like just sharing energy right you know, right that. so that's great and i will have my own sway you no know, lead never follows that's what chiki said and uh-huh. you never have to to follow shit you have to lead so yeah i'm really getting to i'm really looking forward to have my own swag and go out and all that and yeah and I see you spoke to, to that quote. You probably spoke to the answer to my next question. But what are three artists that you would dream love to work with? Mm, major artists? Other than Chief Keith, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say Low Taker. Low Taker. I really like it. Like, oh, really okay, okay. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, Low Taker or... Lil, Lil Yachty, like, I really like Lil okay, Yachty this time, okay. and I feel like he's giving a lot of, um, a lot of shout outs to the underground scene, so I really like that, I really yeah. fuck with him, or Trippy Red, like, I fuck with him too, so, okay, one okay. of those, yeah. And before we head out of here, right, I got two more questions, the first question, question I have to ask you because I know that I'm now I am now also in Paris you know to teach me how to say kicking it with Kachi in French <laughs> really I have to say that <laughs> okay so I don't know if, I don't know if it's gonna translate all the way um I, I personally I would say Mm. Parlons-en avec Kashi. One more time. Parlons-en avec Kashi. Parlons-en avec Parlons-en. Yeah. Avec Kashi. Ave... Yeah. Parlons-en avec Kashi. Parazon avec Kashi. Yes, sir. Yeah, just like that. All right. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, you guys are watching Parazon avec Kashi. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, people that are watching this are also trying to follow their dreams and make steps towards uh, realizing their goals as well. So you as an individual that are that have done that, are doing it and will continue to do that, do you have any lessons or life uh, gems that you learned that you don't mind sharing to that person watching this right now? Mm. Mm, one thing I would say is like, keep, mm, 
um, keep showing them your work till they can ignore it no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that that's the motto. That's the motto. You're right. And then do you have any other, do you have two more lessons or is that the, the mm. do you think that that's the biggest, biggest lesson that people should take away? I think that's the biggest one, but another one would be, I, I, I don't remember the quote, but it's like a quote from, did you see the research of happiness? I uh, didn't see it, no. With, oh, you didn't see it, ah, oh, shit. Maybe maybe they will, they they saw it. Um, there is that scene where Will Smith is talking to his to his. Oh, kid. you mean the, the oh the pursuit of happiness? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you saw it. Yes, 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 okay. yeah, definitely, of course, yes. So there is the this scene. They are in a basketball court, I believe. And yeah, yeah. Will yeah. Smith is talking to his to his boy, and I don't remember what what he said, but. That sentence is like would be the the second better uh, the, the second bigger thing you gotta always think about it. I I will tell it somewhere mm. actually. I have to because yeah that that that's really important. I don't remember the exact quote, but that was like something like if you got a dream, you gotta you gotta go through it, even though people would say yeah you won't do it. That's something like that. Right. But yeah, that's super important. Like keep okay, okay. going in your lane. That's right. Yeah. Okay, okay. And thank you for one sharing your story. And like I said, be our first international artist, international guest of any industry coming on our show and, and really talking to your story. I, I know that the time zones are different, but I'm glad he was able to do this. Yeah. Super different. It's like five right now. I got a heat and all that, but I yeah, know, thanks I know. to you, bro. Thanks to you for hosting me. That's my first interview in English and all that. So I was kind of nervous, but I really appreciate you, bro. Thanks. Well, hey, it's what I'm here for. And you guys can check out my boy, Sammy. Maybe check his music on Apple Music, Spotify, and also out there on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. Just look up Game Boy Sammy. Yeah. Game Boy with an I, not a Y. You can look up on my IG at Game Boy, G-A-M-E-B-O-I, Sammy, S-A-M-M-Y, on Instagram. And check out this interview on the, on the DC Voice page, at the DC Voice, on Instagram and YouTube. It's Kasha Analyst, and you guys are watching. Pat, 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 Pat I almost had it. Pat, 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 <laughs> Pardon I almost had it. <laughs> avec. Avec. Kashi. Kashi. There we yes, go. Sir. There we go. Say, there we say go. for him one more time and then we're out of here. You guys are watching one more time, Game Boy. Pardon avec Kashi. That begin. There we go. And yo, we're out of here, y'all. Peace. Peace out.